The information contained in this video is intended for educational purposes. We are not responsible for any damage to your device resulting from improper disassembly or installation. Proceed at your own risk. This is Mike from GoCellPhoneRepair.com and today we're going to replace the digitizer, otherwise known as touchscreen, on a Samsung Galaxy Tab 3. This is a relatively easy repair as far as tablets go, but there are a few things to watch out for, so please watch the entire video before you begin. As usual, tools, replacement parts, and any tech notes that I add after the video is published can be found by following the link in the video description. As you can see, this tablet has quite a few cracks in the lens. We have our replacement part here. There's a single flex cable at the top, and this tablet is awesome to work on. You don't even need a screwdriver to take it apart. So fortunately, the LCD is good. Uh, display is fine. All we have to do here is make sure that we remove any micro SD card that might be in the device, and from there, we're going to just remove the entire back panel along with the bezel. So you wanna have a few pry tools on hand. I recommend you get something that's slightly flexible. So we have guitar picks that are generally, uh, also you can have an ISSM on hand just in case, but you probably will not need it. What I usually do is just kind of push down in between the glass and the bezel. And as you can see, these flexible picks will actually let you kind of go around the corners. Now this is a relatively safe procedure. There's not too many things you can damage, but you will want to watch ahead. And there are some flex cables right around where the volume controls are and also down where the power button is, uh, excuse me, where the home button is. But it's pretty tough to hit those unless you're just really bad. So um, you'll see how I go around the corners with these. I just kind of work my way around until the clips are disengaged and you can go all the way down the side around the bottom and do be careful around the charging port as usual. You don't want to uh, go in at too much of an angle there. But if you just go slowly and take your time, you'll notice that once this thing starts to unclip, you can literally just grab it and kind of pull it away from the frame and you can disengage the rest of the clips pretty much with your fingers. And that is uh, probably the most difficult part of this repair, I think. So from here, we can just remove the rear housing and you'll see there was that flex cable there and at the top. And of course the top one, we're not too worried about, but you never wanna cut through those with your pry tool. We'll set the housing aside for now. And the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and disconnect the battery. So if you look down there at the bottom, there's a small piece of capped on tape that you'll have to peel back. And I usually get it started with a pair of tweezers. And once you have that pulled up a little bit, you can usually grab it with your hands and just go ahead and peel it all the way off. I like to set it somewhere near the battery terminal so that when I put the device back together, I'll remember to tape that thing down. Uh, when you go here underneath the pop connector, be very careful. You don't want to pry it at an angle. You want to get all the way underneath this and kind of lift it up gently all at one time. If you pull it from one side, you'll see in my next video that'll be coming up pretty soon is that it's really easy to break that. So uh, someone else had worked on the device and kind of pried it sideways. Now we'll go ahead and disconnect the digitizer here at the top. And that's it. The next thing we have to do is peel, basically pry the screen off the front and then we can put the new one on. So uh, what you'll see here in just a moment is I'm going to use a little bit of heat and kind of move that cable out of the way. We're going to heat up the perimeter here where most of the adhesive is. Now this is some pretty heavy duty adhesive, which is a good thing for the tablet because it's going to seal out any moisture or dust. But when we go to take it apart, it's really heavy duty. So you have to take your time. I recommend you use heat. Uh, this could probably done be done without heat, but the thing is it increases the likelihood that you're going to break something else. In this case, the frame that the digitizers attached to. So I get this question a lot. Can I do this without a heat gun? Yes, you can, but you really want to bring this thing up to temperature of about 90 to 100 degrees if possible. It makes the prying a lot easier. You can see here, I just kind of started with the metal tool initially. And once I get underneath here, I'm going to immediately switch over to a softer tool. One other thing to note is that you don't want to go in too far. Uh, basically, the end of where that white stripe is, is as far as you want to go. If you go further than that, you're going to push adhesive onto the display and it makes this, it'll make it very difficult to clean because when you get anything sticky on an LCD or an AMOLED, it just, uh, it makes a big mess and it's not fun to clean up. So don't pry too far inside. Just use that, that white line as a guide. And again, you'll see that I'm just going to work with some heat here for a little bit, which makes the job much, much easier. And if you're in the business, you definitely want to have a heat gun. I mean, they're about 15 bucks at the most, a worthy investment, even if you're not doing this for a living. If you just are kind of uh, into doing your own repairs on phones and other things around the house, you will find that heat guns come in very, very handy. And they're far more effective than a blow dryer ever could be.
All right, so we're going to speed things up here a little bit so we can just kind of move through this. As you already know, it took a little bit longer, so just patience and persistence. And once this thing starts to come apart, you want to be really careful that you don't let any glass fall down in between the lens and the LCD. And also, you'll see here in just a moment, I will put on some rubber gloves. I recommend you do this before you get anywhere near the LCD. The last thing you want to do is get fingerprints on those things that are just a headache to clean off. So uh, again, you'll see that this adhesive is very, very sticky. And in fact, sometimes it sticks between the frame or the housing and the uh, lens, which is why I've got the blade in there. I'm going to go ahead and cut through any of that stuff that's just kind of uh, holding it together and keeping me from being able to separate the two. And then you'll see I go down the front, very shallow pry in order to get past the adhesive. And we are going to have to transfer this home button over from the old digitizer to the new one. Go ahead and set it down here for the moment. But we do want to go ahead and remove all of the residual adhesive because our replacement part comes with the adhesive stuck to it. Canned air will definitely come in handy for removing the dust. Uh, but if you get unlucky and you end up getting something else on the screen, you'll have to use some screen cleaner in order to remove any uh, fingerprints or smudges that you might get on there. So again, be very careful when you're working with this. All right, so you see I went ahead and put my gloves on here because we don't want to touch the LCD and we definitely don't want to touch the inside of this new digitizer. Hopefully it doesn't have any fingerprints. Every once in a while they come from the factory and they've already got blemishes on them, which is very frustrating. For that reason, I recommend you check carefully before you attach this. This is some really, really heavy duty adhesive. And once you stick it on there, you don't want to pull it apart again. Um, it's not impossible, but it makes things messier and you don't get quite as good of a seal ever the second time. So you see, I'm just very carefully brushing off anything that I see. And apparently I had one little smudge uh, up in the top left hand corner there that I had to kind of buff out. And it always seems as if dust just constantly falls while you're working. So my recommendation is to get this new screen on as soon as possible. Once you know you've got your surface clear, of course, remember to put your home button on. If you don't, you're going to hate life. Um, I'm going to pull the plastic off of the front of the glass so that that way, if we hold it up in front of the LCD, we can see if there are in fact any smudges uh, right before we install it. So we will go ahead and uh, probably attach the home button to the glass if I remember correctly. So this one had a very thin strip at the top and a very thin strip at the bottom, or I'm sorry, that one actually went all the way around. So once you remove this, you'll go ahead and set the home button inside the digitizer. And our last thing that we'll need to do is go ahead and peel that plastic off on the inside. And that's always tricky to get a hold of. So I went ahead here with a plastic stick spudger. This is not a metal tool and just kind of went under the corner until I got a hold of it. And now the very last thing we'll do is just kind of look through this as we apply it, make sure we don't see any fingerprints or anything. And then from here, this is the one thing about this installation that's kind of just eyeballed. You have to line up the glass with the LCD. There's not really any frame around there right now. So you want to take your time and be careful. Make sure you line this up exactly centered. Uh, you can be off by about a half a millimeter or so, but any more than that. And what you're going to end up finding is that it's bumping into the side of the, the rear housing. So do grab the corners here and kind of make sure that everything matches up. And once you set it down, the rest of this is downhill. We're just going to flip it over, plug in the digitizer, connect the battery, and uh, that's just about it. All right, remember to put your tape back over the battery terminal. And we're gonna go ahead and power it up, test the touch screen, make sure everything's working before we put it all back together.
And the last thing you're going to notice is that when you go to put this panel on the back, the clips are a little bit funny on this device. So uh, pretty much on the left hand side, which will, when you're looking at the tablet from the front, the left hand side, you have to really um, just go all the way around this thing and make sure it snaps in all the way. There are a couple areas where it looks like it's connected, but it doesn't quite snap on completely. So I usually just work around the perimeter a couple times, make sure it's nice and uh, flush all the way around. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button and feel free to share it on the social network platform of your choice. Check out some of my recent repair and product review videos and visit us on the web at gocellphonerepair.com. Thanks for watching.